this in the light heavyweight division, a WBA title eliminator. Zerdo Ramirez, look at the record. 42 wins, no losses, 28 knockouts. He's 30 years old in his fighting prime. He's two and a half inches taller than his Cuban opponent, and he'll enjoy a three-inch reach advantage. 12 rounds. Here are the unified rules of boxing. No standing, eight count, no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and only the referee can stop the fight. Here's Jeremiah Gallegos. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Antonio, Texas. This is our main event attraction of the evening live on the zone. It is Mexico versus Cuba. 12 rounds in our WBA light heavyweight title eliminator. And now introducing to you first, set to make his ring walk and fighting out of the blue corner, Please welcome the monster, Unieski Gonzalez. Well, it may be the final countdown for Unieski Gonzalez as he makes the walk for this big fight. But Sergio, he knows what's on the line. At the age of 36 years old, it's win or go home. It's win or go home, but he thinks it's destiny. He was, he was very animated at the fighter meeting. He thinks it's destiny that he's fought three softballs in a row. He thinks it's destiny that he's at this point of his career very confident. He has the power to back it up. He just has to land something big early. I think it's fair to wonder what Gonzalez has left in the tank. His loss to Alexander Vostik was bad. He was battered and knocked out in three rounds. He's won three fights since then, but they have been against no one on close to the level of Gilberto Ramirez. And Sergio, you said he has to start fast. 13 of his 17 knockout wins have come within the opening two rounds. Unieski Gonzalez with a win tonight will get a shot at Dimitri Bivols and his WBA light heavyweight title. And there is Zerto Ramirez about to make the walk. The gum is out. The gold is above his head. He's got his cowboy hat on. Here's Jeremiah Gallegos. And now, ladies and gentlemen, ready to go and making his way to the ring, comes in undefeated from Mazalan, Sinaloa, Mexico, Gilberto Zurdo Ramirez. Okay. Well, you see Zerdo Ramirez there, and you hear the voice of the late Vicente Fernandez, the great Mexican singer who passed away earlier this week. Ramirez commissioned an artist to draw a likeness of Fernandez on his shoes, and he is dedicating this fight to the late, great El Rey. Any Mexican, any one that comes from Mexican lineage and blood will tell you how special Vicente Fernandez was to anybody. He was El Rey, El Idolo de Mexico, and great pride takes in effect whenever you're talking about Vicente Fernandez, especially associated to boxing and fighting. And Ramirez's first 25 pro fights came in Mexico, but 
all but one of his last 18, including this one, have come in the United States. A native of Mazatlan, Mexico, six foot two and a half inch southpaw at 175 pounds. He looks the part, Chris, and lately he's delivered the goods. Yeah, he has three straight knockouts since his move up to light heavyweight. His team for years would say that the lack of power he showed at 168 was because of how hard he had to work to get to 168, starving himself to get that big frame down to 168. Now that he's at 175, comfortably making that weight, the power within him is showing itself. And not, not only Mazatlan, but from Sinaloa, boxing rich Sinaloa. Ray Chavez came from there. Jorge Arce, Giovanni Segura, a lot of pride from boxers and fighters from Sinaloa. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, here from the Alamo City, San Antonio, Texas, USA. Tonight, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Zurdo Promotions and Rivalta Boxing brings you the main event of the evening. This, a 12-round WBA light heavyweight title eliminator, live on the zone, it's sponsored to you by Hennessy, never stop, never settle. And odds for tonight's fights are brought to you by Bet Online. Tonight's contest is sanctioned to you by the Texas Department of Licensing for Regulation and Combative Sports, the Commission Chair, Rick Figueroa, Executive Director, Brian Francis. Also sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, WBA President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, the WBA Supervisor, Julio Tar. The three judges scoring this contest at ringside are from Texas, Javier Alvarez, from California, Sergio Caiz, and from Massachusetts, John Matfitz. And your referee in charge of the action at the sound of the bell from Texas, Hall of Famer, Rafael Ramos. And now, ladies and gentlemen, two diamonds, one ring tonight who will shine the brightest, Mexico. Cuba, San Antonio, and to the world, it's golden time! Introducing to you first tonight, fighting out of the blue corner, standing with trainer Eufrancio Gonzalez, and also Os Osvaldo Rodelo and Henry Rivalta, tonight wearing white with teal, with pink and trim. He weighed it at 173.8 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the ring with an outstanding record, 24 bouts, 21 victories, 17 wins, coming to you by way of knockout and only three defeats. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, USA, by way of Cuba, here is the monster, Unieski Gonzalez! And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, standing with trainer Julian Chua, Chris Wong, and Joel Flores. Tonight, he donned silver with red trim and tipped the scale at 174.4 pounds. Tonight, this Mexican warrior steps into this contest perfect as he dedicates his belt in the memory of icon, Mexican icon, Vicente Chete Fernandez. His record, 42 bouts, 42 victories, 28 wins, coming to you by way of knockout, no to beat. Here is the former five-time defending super metalweight champion of the world, El Invicto de Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico, presentando Gilberto Zurdo You received the pre fight instruction. Received the instruction. Protect yourself. Protect it all the time. Give me a clean fight. Una pelea limpia. Good luck. Buena suerte. Gilberto Zerto Ramirez has looked like a world beater at the light heavyweight division. 
And he's going to have to beat another tough Cuban tonight, Unieski Gonzalez, who looks like he hasn't smiled in 20 years. He is a nice guy, but tonight <laughs> all business as he looks to become a wrecking crew in the early round. Scheduled for 12, Ramirez in the white and red, Gonzalez in the teal and pink. Key to this fight, to me, is distance. Uh, Gonzalez was carved up by Bostic in the uh, fight three years ago, four years ago now, because Bostic was able to keep his distance and just batter him from the outside. Gonzalez has to find a way on the inside to make this more of a bar fight. Ramirez so soft-spoken, walks in a room so unassuming, but in the ring, he carries quite a punch. 28 KOs and 42 wins, and he's vowed to get another one here tonight as Gonzalez trying to start fast. Yeah, Ramirez showing respect for Gonzalez. Wait a minute, a right hand lands for Gonzalez. Gonzalez is dangerous early, especially in the first round. He has seven first round knockouts. You know, for all of Ramirez's physical tools, he oftentimes doesn't use them. He has got the length and the reach to be really effective operating behind the jab, but a lot of times in his career, we've seen him prefer to take fights on the inside. And there's that body shot that Ramirez is going to be looking for. Body shots and uppercuts if you're Ramirez, but you got to stay off the ropes. Left hand connects on Zerto, and this is a dream start for Unieski Gonzalez. He told us he was destined for this moment and destined for this opportunity. He's fighting like it. His feet are all tangled up with the southpaw. You'll see that a lot when an orthodox fighter squares off against a left-hander. So Gonzalez lost three of his last five fights before the three-year hiatus. But if you look back and dive into those fights, many think he was robbed in the fight against Jean Pascal. And then he had a majority decision loss to Shabransky. So those early losses weren't terrible ones. It's the Vostick loss that stands out as a really bad one. That Pascal loss was bad because I believe he won that fight and that derailed his career. Right, and straight derailed, right hand. Derailed well, his ambition and confidence going forward. As they say in team sports, you can throw the records out the window. That does not matter now. And Gonzalez is giving Zerto all kinds of fits. Big right hand landed by Gonzalez right there. Ramirez acknowledges it, but he doesn't want to take big right, shots like that so early in the fight. There's that left uppercut. Uppercuts are what make Surdo Ramirez so dangerous. But right now, he needs to be very careful in this first three minutes of this fight. Great start for the Cuban as he eats the straight left hand. Well, we've got a fight, gentlemen. Listen. Deep breath. Come on, the mouth is out. Okay. Look, he can't keep that pace, but you can, okay? I just don't want none of that shit. It's too early to be exchanging all crazy, okay? Use your skills first. Okay, box the fuck out of him. Don't let him hit you with anything clean, okay? We'll get, we'll, we'll put the hard stuff a little bit more later, okay? But right now, just be smart, okay? Don't get hit with no, no stupid shit, like the right hands, okay? And here's that stupid S-H-I-T that <laughs> Julian Chua is telling Ramirez, don't get hit with that right hand. And Gonzalez having Ramirez against the ropes, nothing landed cleanly there, but he's doing his shots. This is what he does big. Just, just to be clear, spelling it doesn't make it any better. <laughs> hey, you can hear it, I'm going to say it. I apologize for Sergio's spelling of that word. I did love the, the advice in the corner. So listen, just box him right now. You can rough him up a little later, but he can't keep this pace up. But this is what I was talking about. You know, you go back to the Jesse Hart fights, which Ramirez is effectively known for, two of the best fights and best wins of his career. When Hart was able to get back into it, he took the fight on the inside. He made it more of a brawl. And when you watch them, sometimes it looked like Ramirez was just letting him do that. He's got the physical tools to avoid fights like this. In that first round, it looked to me like Ramirez was showing too much respect for Gonzalez. And I, I like the fact that he did that because Gonzalez is dangerous early. But don't show too much respect where you get the confidence away. 
pop them like that on the outside of the jab. When you have the reach advantage, you gotta use that, that, that advantage to your benefit. There's another stiff jab from Zerto. Zerto needs to pop him from the outside and gut him from the inside. And Sergio, everything so far from Ramirez is upstairs. His two wins over, or his two knockdowns against Sullivan Barrera, both courtesy of body shots and, early in that fight. And this is how he sets up those uppercuts and body shots, by popping him with that jab from the outside, using that reach advantage, making your opponent miss. That's one thing Gonzalez has. He has bad balance when he misses. Good head movement there from Gonzalez, who slowed down considerably here in the second round compared to round one. Well, that's because Ramirez is not standing in front of him anymore. You can't be a stationary target with Gonzalez. He has heavy hands and heavy feet. Good jab there from the Cuban. It, it appears that Ramirez can basically just jab him to death all night if he wants to. If he wants to, but he likes to get on the inside as well. His money punches that left, left hook to the body. And this is what Gonzalez likes to do, sometimes bury his forehead right in your chest. But, Sergio, you say if he does that, He's perfect picking for Ramirez's uppercuts. He is, especially with that right uppercut. But it seems like Ramirez is a little bit too relaxed right now. He needs to be careful, especially in these early rounds. Got him coming in this time. Ramirez just too excited, I think, to play it safe. He landed some beautiful, strong right uppercuts on the inside. That's his money punch. If he can pair that with that left hook to the body right there, just like he did in his last fight, that's how he wins this fight. Good skills being shown here by Zerto Ramirez. Exciting fight. Beautiful round, okay? Beautiful round. Nice deep breath. Okay? Every time you're on the outside, okay, find that jab. Just watch the counters, okay? I want you to stay a little bit out off center, okay? Give me a little bit more head movement after your jab, okay? Much better. Okay? In between, when you're exchanging with him, keep your defense sharp, all right? Okay? Remember, he can't keep this up, bro. He will not be able to keep this up. Keep everything sharp. Keep everything sharp. You're gonna get this guy out of here, no rush, okay? More water? Love the instructions by Julian Chua right there in the corner of Ramirez. You're gonna get this guy out, but don't give him opportunity so early. Take him into deeper water. He's not listening though, Sergio. He's coming right after him. Great instructions, but if you don't listen to him, how great are they? Well, he's following him right there. He's punching and dipping. You gotta watch out for counters coming back because they're, they're gonna be wide counters coming back from Gonzalez. So punch with precision and then get out. He's right in the fire and the crowd is eating it up. Yeah, but look at how smooth Ramirez is. Now he's moving his head, pivoting away, not standing in front of the power of Unesky Gonzalez. Well, not even a warning. Not even a warning. You know, that was a cheap move by Gonzalez, who kept Ramirez in that headlock longer than he needed to. But taking a point away without a warning is ridiculous. You wonder if he'd have done the same thing to Ramirez. Right. Beautiful boxing here by Ramirez. I mean, getting angles and still not ignoring the body. The body and the uppercuts is what Ramirez does so well. Oh, and he got caught with the right hand. He's rolling the dice, Sergio. Gonzalez caught, him, caught Ramirez coming in with that check right hand. Right hand there for Zerto. Zerto wants to get him out of here right now. Well, he better be careful because I'm telling you, Gonzalez is dangerous early in these fights. He's looking for those overhand rights. That's the money punch with a southpaw, just like that, coming up short. Is this the fight you expected, Chris Mannix? Not really. 
because Gonzalez, well, he's been a little more active than I thought he was going to be. But Ramirez is kind of letting him be active. He's staying in the pocket, just trading with him and not using his outside skills. Ramirez landed a big left hand, but Gonzalez took it well. He wanted to make a statement. He wants Bebo to notice him. And he is doing that so far. Gonzalez on the front foot. Nice spin move by Zerto. Zerto is nifty for being such a tall, big fighter. I'm really impressed with the pivots, just like that. The pivots of Ramirez, not standing in front of the power. Oh, he got caught there by Gonzalez. Gonzalez is landing some power punches, and Zerto's feeling it. Zerto's feeling them, but he's also rolling with them. They're going off the shoulders, the big shoulders of Ramirez. He's not rolling with all of them. Gonzalez told us, Gonzalez told us this was gonna be his fight, his moment, his destiny. Oh, oh. Water, water. I need the water and some ice. Hey, you need to lift your hands up. How do you feel? You need to raise your guard. And you gotta move your head. Once he's on the ropes, you need to throw to the body. Move your head. Two straight up. You're dropping your guard. It's 12 round fight. Two jabs in the right hand and then move your head. Keep in mind that was probably a 10 8 round for Ramirez because of the point deduction for holding. Round four in a more, I dare I say, exciting and competitive fight than we thought this would be. Some really good punches and exchanges in that round. Ramirez got the better of it, but better of it, but I'm telling you, Gonzalez is looking for that right hand, that short right hand, and that looping overhand right. You're giving him a lot of credit though, Sergio. I don't think he has much left. I think the corner is right from Zerto Ramirez saying he is going to tire. I think he's already there. How do you like that right hand, Chris? That landed cleanly on Ramirez. Okay. He's looking for that big right hand, I'm telling you. He's a cagey veteran with power. Yeah, you're not seeing combinations, though. It's one shot, waiting. Feet seem stuck in the mud. So Sergio believes Chris does not. Let's see how this plays out here in the fourth round, under two minutes to go. Zerto Ramirez, a substantial favorite here tonight. Not many people giving Gonzalez much of a chance at all. Couple of shots landed there for Gonzalez. As you look at the punches in round three, Zerto with 32 landed, 21 for Gonzalez. Gonzalez walking back from Ramirez now. Oh, he caught him with the left hook. That buckled the knees. Is this the beginning of the end for Gonzalez? He's coming forward now like a bull. Incredible action between these two light heavyweights. Look at this, and down goes Gonzalez. The sale was a push. I love the way that Ramirez is countering backwards. They're all power counter shots. Zerto Ramirez fighting like he's got somewhere to go. He does not want this to continue much longer. And we saw in the Chisora Parker fight, the uppercut was there for Joseph Parker. I think the uppercut is right there for Ramirez too. And this is the thing about Gonzalez, he has bad balance. Every time he misses, he falls off balance. And he's eating punch after power punch. You're right, his foundation is shot. Oh, but he's still got it up to land that right hand. Incredible action here in San Antonio. Wow. Two big men throwing big shots right here. Gonzalez is fighting on fumes right now. The referee taking a good look at Zerto, bearing down on his opponent. 
He's ready to go. Gonzalez about to throw something back. Ten seconds left. What a fight this has been. Wow. What is going on? Bien, bien. Dime. How do you feel? Come on. I'm going to stop the fight. How do you feel? You don't feel good. I'm going to stop the fight. Huh? Huh? Water. I, I need you to work hard right now. He used to jump up, uppercut, and this is where Ramirez was really impressive. It that left hook right there shook up Gonzalez, but Gonzalez still dangerous with that overhand right. Ramirez respects that right hand. But through the Ramirez with every shot in the book, Gonzalez refusing to crumble. Let me tell you something, Gonzalez really slow off his stool. The doctor needs to stop this. Gonzalez literally had to be lifted off his stool at the okay. end or at the beginning Let's of go. this round. I think it's a mistake to allow this fight to continue. He might have to be lifted off the canvas here in a few moments. His trainer asking him, do you want to continue? And he didn't answer several times. Yeah, really? the body language said a lot in that moment. Gonzalez really? was largely unresponsive to those questions. Ramirez is going to have to put out Gonzalez. Put him out of his misery here, because Gonzalez is not going anywhere. The referee, Rafael Ramos, right on top of these guys. Gonzalez still looking for that overhand right. Pretty impressive chin shown by Gonzalez. He's just eating straight left hands. And now he's coming forward. Remember the Alamo. That's what Gonzalez, that's his mentality. I'm not out of it till I'm out of it. I think it'll serve Ramirez right to just pot shot Gonzalez right now. Make him fall off balance by boxing outside the jab and stepping back and catching him with that uppercut. Look at the percentage landed for both these fighters on their power punches. It has been a bruising encounter to say the least. Gonzalez had almost 400 amateur fights, was part of the National Cuban Olympic team, but this is not the style we're used to seeing by Cuban fighters. He's a slugger. And just when we counted him out, he's right back in it. And there's a rare body shot from Zerto Ramirez, Chris. That's surprising, given how effective he was with those body shots against Sullivan Guerrero. Well, he's already lasted longer than Sullivan Barrera did. You're just waiting for Zerto to catch him clean. Zerto doing the right thing, pivoting away now, not standing in front of Gonzalez. Nice little good right hand on the inside for Ramirez. 30 seconds to go. Gonzalez looks gassed. That checked right hook hurt Gonzalez. I think a barrage of punches is going to stop Gonzalez. And finally downstairs, Zerto working the body too. How is Gonzalez still on his feet? I would have bet a lot of money he didn't make it through this fifth round when it started. But here he is. One tough customer is Yudiaski Gonzalez. Everybody calm, everybody calm. Beautiful, bro. You're winning this by a landslide, okay? Look, you're head hunting a little too much now, okay? This guy can take a shot to the head and he's aware of it, okay? Get back down to that body. When you turn him and you get him on the ropes, 
Go back downstairs. It's gonna open the head up again, okay? You can't take much longer, okay? Get in that body, okay? Get in that body. Deep breath, breathe, baby, breathe. Okay? When you every chance you can get that body, get that body, okay? Don't let him recover. That's great advice from the corner of Gilberto Ramirez. He has been headhunting for most of this fight. A little more digging to the body can set up one big shot. Absolutely, in that, in that replay we showed, he, Ramirez was landing too easily to the head, but it was a left hand to the body that was the most effective punch. Let's take a look at Chris Mannix's scorecard through five. Pretty easy fight to score up until this point, 49-45. Gonzalez did excellent work in that first round. Since then, even with Gonzalez having his moments, it has been all Zerto Ramirez. Looking at that scorecard, you wouldn't realize how much drama we've had in this bout. If Ramirez studied, the fights of Gonzalez, he, he would know not to stand in front, always be shifting away, looking to keep Gonzalez on the outside. The uppercuts and the body shots do not exchange with Unieski Gonzalez. Not much coming back now from Gonzalez. Trying to shake his arms out. The leg's still a little off balance for Gonzalez. And Sergio, despite the advice from the corner, Ramirez really isn't heaving it right now. He's staying upstairs with most of his shots. You know, anytime you have a fighter that's cocking that right hand, you know, you don't want to give him that opportunity with body shots. So maybe that's what it is with Ramirez. <laughs> I was going to say, Gonzalez almost fell over, and then he just did. And took Ramirez with him. Hey, right here. Right here. Help Ramirez up. Many in this crowd still on their feet. It's been that kind of fight. The first four rounds were incredible. Sergio, you said if Gonzalez had a chance to win. Ooh, nice counter right hand. I was about to say, did his moment pass him by? Does he still have a chance? Well, I think, I think we're seeing the fact that he does have a chance because Ramirez is backing up now. He's respecting the power and the strength and the resilience of Unieski Gonzalez. Whenever you have tough guys like this, especially when they're taking big shots upstairs, you just got to focus downstairs to the body, frustrate them, make them fall off balance, make them use those 36-year-old legs. See, just like that, Ramirez threw a combination, made a miss, and backed up. Gonzalez doesn't have good balance. And we thank you again for joining us here tonight from San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo. The Alamo. Chris, give us your knowledge on the Battle of the Alamo. Not enough time for that, Todd. <laughs> I think we do have it because you don't know anything about it. I don't know. I've been to a lot of Spurs games. Have you? Yeah. What's that have to do with the Alamo? It means I've gone to the Alamo a few times. Not the Alamo Dome, Chris. The actual Alamo. Okay. Is the difference? Big right hand. Uh, a few one. withstood a lot. Oh, That's yeah. what happened there, right? Oh, oh. Hey, I need you to throw the punch to the chest. Hey, you want to be, be careful when he not tries to counterpunch you. Round seven. Who would have thought we'd be here at the end of the fourth? Gonzalez looks like he was completely washed out. Wouldn't answer his trainer when he said, do you want to keep fighting? The doctor Everything took a good look at him. That's it. Stay in a little bit more, 
Oh, a big head collision. Looked like the forehead of Gonzalez. Clint Ramirez, good. Yeah, I caught him right on the jaw, too. Ooh. Nice and alert. That could change the complexion of a fight. Back on the jab, back on the jab in the face. They both collided, and you get to see that a lot with uh, lefties and righties. They clash feet, they clash heads a lot. Good left cross from Ramirez. Back in the body when you lock him up. Watch that right hand. See, watch that right hand is what Julian Chua is saying, and that's a big right hand. That Ramirez just needs to look out for. That's the re Oh, a shot from Gonzalez. And that snapped Ramirez's head, and he's backpedaling. Ramirez is hurt by that left hook. That rocks through the Ramirez. And he goes downstairs. And there's that chopping right hand that Unesky Gonzalez is known for. He did that with Pascal a lot. Chopping right hand. There it is again. Ramirez continues to neglect the body, and it's right there for the picking. When he looks at this fight over again, that's what he's going to see. He's, he's ignoring one of his favorite punches, the left hand to the body and the uppercuts. So flat-footed, too, is Gonzalez. It's, a, it's amazing where he gets his power from. That's it. Well, that's exactly what you need to do to get that power. Flat feet, but that also creates bad balance when you miss. There's the jab. You know, I'd be interested in the state of Zerto's jaw right now. If you look back, and we'll show the replay after this round, that wasn't a headbutt. That was <laughs> like a head slam where the top of Gonzalez's head clipped the jaw, almost like a power punch that Ramirez took. Gonzalez's recuperative powers are incredible. How is he still in this fight when he's looked gassed for so long? Because Ramirez is giving him a chance. He's fighting him off. And that was a good round for Unieski. Yes, it was. Deep breath. Bro. Sort of. The jab is the key to this fight, bro. The jab is the key to this fight. You need to keep jabbing every moment you can get. And here we're gonna see the, the headbutt in slow motion. You get this a lot with lefties and righties, but wow! That, that was a right, like a right hand crushing against the side of his jaw, and a headbutt is harder than a fist. It's like a wrecking ball. Wow! Ramirez got shook by that head clash, and then that punch, Wow, now I now you know why Ramirez was backing up. Look and now. Gonzalez Keep your right hand up when you're, back, when you're boxing, okay? How much concern do you have right now for Zerto Ramirez? I have some concern. Even though he's winning this fight comfortably, he's giving opportunities to Gonzalez. Round eight scheduled for 12. I've never seen a headbutt collide that much, that, that cleanly on a jaw. Chris Mannix's scorecard. Yeah, I've got it 68-64 for Ramirez, but Gonzalez, that was his best round since the first round of this fight. Landed cleaner shots. Headbutt doesn't count as a punch, but that was an impactful moment for this fight. We'll see how well Ramirez recovers after that. Oh, he ate a couple, but then landed a right, did Gonzalez, who's all of a sudden looking very confident. Good check right hand right there. Yeah, when he sticks and moves, that's when he's at his best, no doubt. And that's what Ramirez has to do here. He can't fight Gonzalez this fight. He can't exchange punches with him. You got to pot shot him from the outside. Make Gonzalez fall off balance when he misses and make him pay. 
Yeah, and this is a bad distance for Gonzalez. This is where Vostick had him back in 2017, was able to carve him up. He's got to get back on the inside, make it a more physical fight. A lot of redness around both eyes. The nose looks swollen of Ramirez. He has been in a fight tonight for sure. Yeah, Vostick kept him at a distance. Shabransky kept him at a distance. That's how you have success with a tough guy. Don't, don't stand in front of him. Don't let him get off with punches. You pot shot him. Playing much safer this round, it appears, is Ramirez. Much smarter. Good head movement again from the Cuban. And once again, Sergio, everything is upstairs. In between rounds, Zerto's corner is begging him to go to the body, yet when he comes out here for three minutes, he's going upstairs every time. There's that chopping right hand by Gonzalez. Well, the reason he's not going to the body right now is because he's boxing effectively from the outside, and he's pivoting away, shifting. This is what he needs to do right now because Gonzalez is not going anywhere. There's a left hand to the body, spins him around, goes upstairs and caught him flush with that left hand. He caught him flush because he got an angle. He caught that south point angle. Now he's using the shift. Good round here for Zerto. That's how you beat down tough guys. You fight them and beat them from an angle. Good choppy left hand there by Gonzalez to end the round. What I tell you, bro, look, what I tell you, he can't fight on the outside. He can't beat you on the outside. You keep that, you keep that jab going, you keep that nice, strong, uh, long, straight left hand going, he'll never close the distance, okay? Deep breath, okay? Slow everything down. Surdo, the outside is where we belong, where we belong, okay? Don't let him get close. Keep him at bay with those long shots, okay? Stiff jab, strong straight left hand, okay? Ramirez dominated this round, but at the end of the round, Gonzalez chopped him with that left hand. Sudo's feet acted a little bit funny right there, walking back to the corner. I think you're right, Sergio. I didn't notice that. I did. I mean, Ramirez dominated two minutes and 55 seconds, but it just took one punch from the dangerous Cuban at the end. Round nine, scheduled for 12. If you're just joining us, this has been an incredible fight to watch. The first four rounds were off the charts good, like fight of the year type of stuff. And then we got to a point where we thought Ramirez was just going to blast him out of there. But Gonzalez continues to hang in there and land the occasional punch like that. A monster performance from the monster, Unieski Gonzalez. Look at the swelling under the eyes of Ramirez. Haven't seen him look like this in a long time. Well, we could see who the natural bigger fighter, the natural light heavyweight is here because punches like that would have taken out anybody at 175. But Ramirez, you know, he has to rely on his skill now. The jab, the body shots just like that. Keep the punches in twos and fuse. Don't exchange too much punches with Gonzalez. Gonzalez is looking to catch you in between the shots with that right hand. That chopping right just missed. And that's because Sudo went downstairs finally, digging down to the bodies, body of Gonzalez. Anytime the taller fighter goes downstairs to the body, the shorter fighter is going to have an opportunity to come over the top. At 175 pounds, Judo Ramirez has three fights and three knockouts. 
But that streak in jeopardy as we're in round nine, scheduled for 12. If Ramirez doesn't hurt Gonzalez to the body, I just don't see Gonzalez going anywhere. He already took the best headshots from Ramirez. Although Ramirez took the best headshot <laughs> from Gonzalez, literally with his head. <laughs> literally. There's that body shot. There's that body shot Ramirez landed on Barrero Sullivan. Gonzalez took that well. Keep digging downstairs. There it is again. That time it was blocked by Gonzalez. Gonzalez was hurt to the body. That's what's going to take out Gonzalez, the body shots. It ain't going to be head shots no more. Good round, okay? Good, okay? Just keep doing what you're doing, okay? We get the knockout, we get the knockout. If not, just keep boxing him up, okay? Keep boxing him from a distance, okay? Deep breath. Okay? No time on those ropes. I love the defense. The defense, the jab, okay? okay? Our fight's outside. I'll tell you what, the face of Ramirez tells quite the tale, does it not, Sergio? Yes, it does. I mean, this is a man that is definitely getting touched up by a stronger, bigger, natural light heavyweight. But a body shot actually caught the attention of Gonzalez in that last round. It was a left uppercut, two body shots downstairs. That's good work on the cut above the left eye of Zerto Ramirez in between rounds. It doesn't look like it's bleeding that much, but it is starting to close that left eye a little bit, maybe affecting his vision over these final three rounds. A little bit more energy coming from Uneski Gonzalez, a little bit more li liveliness in the legs. So you figure when you get to this point in the fight, Sergio, he's got to have feel that second wind coming along. And the adrenaline. And his corner's got to be telling him he needs a knockout, Sergio. How does Zerto, or how does Unieski Gonzalez get it? By timing him with that right hand. I mean, he got close. He's landed it before already. Oh, the crowd senses something, and you can see Gonzalez backpedaling. And Ramirez better not forget the body. The body's what's going to set up the knockout. He slipped that right hand, did Zerto. Him. That right hand is the only thing that Ramirez needs to look out for. He's going to try and pepper him and force the referee to stop it, and he does! Zerto Ramirez, knockout number 29, as he remains perfect in the light heavyweight division. And Gonzalez is out, his legs dancing back to the corner, but what a courageous performance by Udeski Gonzalez. He was out, but he gave the referee a big hug and lifted him up in the air after that. No issue from Udeski Gonzalez with that stoppage. Brave performance, but he knew it was time hey. to stop him. Out, 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 the out. The Cuban out. refused to crumble, out. I'm telling Everybody you, man. That was, that was a courageous performance by Udeski Gonzalez, but El Zurdo de Sinaloa showing us how it's done. And the 36-year-old showing he's still got plenty left. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him again against another prominent light heavyweight after that performance. He gave all he had, Sergio, and there were points in this fight where Ramirez looked shook. I want, I would love to hear Ramirez, what he thought about those punches, because I think he got rocked on more than one occasion. Gonzalez is a puncher, we know that. And he landed cleanly on suitable Ramirez. And here's the end, Sergio. But it was just Ramirez boxing smart, not smothering himself, not giving Gonzalez a chance to land that right hand that he was looking the entire fight for. Keeping the distance, not loading up on the punches was Ramirez, and that's what made the referee, Rafael Ramos, stop this fight. And you know, you usually see the referee hug the fighter. Rarely do you see the fighter <laughs> hug the referee, but look at this, a big bear hug. I think Gonzalez was relieved. Relieved. <laughs> And
And I think Surdo Ramirez was also relieved because he landed so many punches and the brave Cuban wasn't going anywhere. And right now, Unieski Gonzalez in his corner with tears streaming down his face. Describe what he's feeling right now. You know, he was very adamant about this opportunity. He felt it was destiny. You know, he faced three southpaws in a row before facing his fourth southpaw. So he felt this was his moment. He knows he has the power. He knows he has the experience. Very emotional, but that's passion running down his face right there. Kudos to him. He made his family and his country extremely proud tonight. As he took Zerto Ramirez to the brink many times in this fight. Needless to say, though, to the victor go the spoils. Zerto Ramirez now 43-0 with 29 knockouts. And yes, Sergio, he's still only 30 years old. 30 years old, impressive. His fourth straight knockout at light heavyweight. But if you're a light heavyweight, you're in there with some monsters. You got Bebo watching, better be watching, Joe Smith watching. There was vulnerabilities in Sudo in there. But guess what, Todd? Just like you mentioned earlier, there was vulnerabilities in the monster too in better be So it's an exciting division. Glad to be a part of it. Jeremiah Gagos makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, here from San Antonio, Texas, let's give both of these warriors a huge round of applause. Our referee, Rafael Ramos, puts a halt to this contest. The official time comes to you, 1.23, round 10, to the winner by TKO, and now the number one WBA light heavyweight mandatory challenger, and still undefeated, Gilberto Zurdo Ramirez! Well, Sergio, give me a grade for Zerto tonight. He looked vulnerable, but I love the fact that he took punches, because he's going to get punched by these monsters at light heavyweight. So we needed to see this toughness from Surdo Ramirez. We needed to see him get checked. We needed to see go backwards. I needed everything I needed to see. So yes, I thought it was a solid B-plus performance, but on toughness, on resilience, on facing the fire, it was an A-plus on Surdo Ramirez's part. But if you break it down, Sergio, there will be some that say, wait a minute. He shouldn't have taken the shots that he took. He should have listened to his corner, played it safe, stayed outside, and avoided all the damage. He fought the wrong game plan against an older, strong fighter in Gonzalez. But that's what made this fight exciting to watch, had everyone on their feet. But sometimes, vulnerable performances will give you the big fight. So if he wanted Dimitri Bibble, Bibble might be looking at this performance saying, I got him next. Let's go into the ring now, and Chris Mannix with Zerto Ramirez. Uh, Gilberto, congratulations. You came into this fight as a heavy favorite, but you could tell from the opening round this was going to be a tough fight. What was it like in there? Well, it was great. It was great to have a, a great fighter in front of me. I knew I knew that it would be a, a hard fight. I knew that it was going to be a difficult fight because when I saw a los ojos, él no tenía, no tenía miedo, no tenía nada que perder. The first time that I saw him at the eyes, I knew that he wanted to be a good fight because I didn't feel like he, he, he felt afraid or nothing to lose. I was a, a good fight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Yuniski Gonzalez, for, to fight me for the opportunity. Now it's time to a big challenge. It's hora de la verdad. Vivol, no puedes correr. Vivol, you can run, baby. You can run. Y esta pelea es dedicada a Vicente Fernández. Viva México, cabrones! What was your game plan coming into this fight? Because against Barrera, you went to the body a lot. In this fight, your corner seemed to be asking you to go to the body, but you were staying upstairs the whole time. I knew that it just take time. I, I, I tried to land in the body shot, but he was prepared. And he was preparing. And the first time I tried to knock him out, and I get uh, upset and all emotional. But at the, at the first fourth round, fifth round, I was like, okay, I wanna keep doing. I know that the it will come. The 
de Noca. Sabía que el Noca iba a venir. You seem to be holding your hand a little bit there. Any issue during the fight? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, then in my two knockout, I get like uh, hurt. But uh, I mean, we have to pay the price, right? Tenemos que pagar el precio as a fighter. And I, I, I have something to say for one friend. He told me uh, it was something. Chris, Chris, come here. Say, say what you told me. Oh, no. Yeah, Ken, <laughs> say, say it. This one? Yeah. You say it. No, say it, say it. Say it. Somebody say it. Zerto is a nightmare dressed like a daydream. <laughs> quoted by Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love that, that, that song. <laughs> All right, from Taylor Swift to Dimitri Bivol, is that the fight you want next? Yeah, of course. That's, that's the fight that I want. Checkmate. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it look, there. look, this is big, big for me. This is another opportunity that I come from, from Mexico. Yo vengo desde Mexico. Vengo a enseñarle a las personas que se puede a creer en, en tus sueños, que se puede llegar a donde quieres. No hay, no hay atajos, solamente dedicación, deseo y disciplina. Gracias. Congratulations, Zerto. We're going to turn to Yuneski Gonzalez here. Yuneski, a lot of emotion on your face after that fight. What was going through your mind? Nada. Eh, antes que nada, quiero felicitar al equipo de Dazón, a Wonder Boy. I want to uh, congratulate the team of Dazón and Golden Boy. Uh, al equipo de Zurdo Ramiro por aceptar la pelea conmigo. I want to thank Gilberto Zurdo Ramirez's team for accepting the fight with me. Nada, creo que tuvo una mejor, una excelente noche. Siempre cuando, cuando me dieron la oportunidad de pelear con él, que sabía, siempre supe que era un, un peleador, un, una pelea bien difícil. It was an excellent night. As soon as I found out that I was going to fight him, I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Mi respeto para él y todo su equipo. Creo que tiene todo, tiene todo todo para ser campeón del mundo. My respects to him and his team. He has everything it takes to be a world champion again. Y agradecido por la oportunidad que se me dio. Nada, una vez, una vez más estoy aquí. Y nada, yo soy un guerrero. Y eso fue todo lo que hice. Entregar mi corazón, brindarle al público una buena pelea, que es lo que. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm a warrior. I came here and I delivered a great fight to the public, and that's all I can do. Pelea como esta se pueden ver, cualquiera puede ganar, puede perder. Pero para eso la afición para un pavel un espectáculo y con Yuneki González siempre eso está garantizado. Gano pierda el show está garantizado. Gracias Ramírez. In a great fight like this, you could win or lose, and that's what Yuneki González did. He gave a great fight, and he made sure that the fans were happy with it. Congratulations to two warriors in the ring. Guys? You know, Sergio, I said it earlier. He looks like the most menacing man on the planet, does Unieskis Gonzalez, but he's got a heart of gold, and you saw it on display there. He literally poured everything he had into that performance. You know, and he told us exactly what he was going to do when we spoke to him in the fighter meetings. and. Passion. He was passionate then, he was passionate during his fighting, and we've seen the emotion running through his face in the fighter interview. I mean, that's as beautiful as it gets, and I just hope we see this man again because he deserves another, another high-profile fight. He deserves another payday. Just what, what toughness on Unieski Gonzalez. But let's focus now on Zerto Ramirez. We're definitely going to see him again, Sergio, as we jump into our highlights. We'll talk about his future next, but let's talk about the present. What happened here tonight? Well, he was in tough. I mean, we, we, we saw him go through some adversity. He was landing some clean shots, but there's that big headbutt, accidental headbutt that you get to see a lot from lefties and righties. Against the ropes, you saw Ramirez having to get caught. Gonzalez punching away, looking for that big right hand, which is his money punch. Ramirez. Fighting the smaller man's fight, letting Gonzalez, trying to set him up with that big shot, ignoring the body early in that fight. But the most success Ramirez had was when finally he was digging upstairs, keeping him in at bay, not trying to take him out. Gonzalez coming forward, that's a no-no right there. Whenever you have a big man going backwards, do not get against the rope. Ramirez was not fighting like a big man, was letting the slugger outslug him in the middle of the ring. Looking for that uppercut, looking for the body shot, but not until 
He started landing the body shots with Gonzalez finally being vulnerable and taking shots like that. You have the referee looking in, looking closely. But everything slowed down after that, after that onslaught. Gonzalez, the resilience on him was incredible. And there's that headshot right there that would have knocked anybody down. We're not accustomed to taking headbutts like that. And Gonzalez took full advantage of that coming forward afterwards. And here we have Ramirez with an onslaught that we thought the referee was going to stop this fight. And he had every opportunity to stop this fight. I think right there, Gonzalez was just relieved that Rafael Ramos finally stopped this onslaught, the barrage, the punishment. But what a fight and what a performance. What a show of will by Unesco Gonzalez and Ramirez. So Zerto Ramirez has his eyes set on Dimitri Bivo. This was a WBA eliminator, Chris. Before this fight, you thought he had a great shot against Bivo. What say you now after what we saw? I think he still has a great shot. Dimitri Bivo is going to wait out Canelo Alvarez to see if Canelo wants to move up to 175 pounds and face him next year. If Canelo goes in a different direction, Bivo versus Ramirez is a natural fight to make. It's a terrific fight in Texas or in Southern California. It's a meaningful fight. It would give Bivo a chance to face a top opponent, which is something he has been asking for for most of the last few years. Bivo, ya no puedes correr, is what Zurdo Ramirez told Bivo. And that's Bivo, you can't run anymore. He has the belts, he's the champion. This is the fight we want to see. And, and it's a very makeable fight as well. So that was the, the quote from Spanish. He also threw in a Taylor Swift quote. <laughs> so all smiles for Zoto Ramirez. He's one of those fighters, Chris, that just has fun fighting. You could see that he, he kind of seemed to enjoy the exchanges. He enjoyed being rough and tumble in there. He did, but that's not a good game plan. And after a fight like this, you think about a Ramirez versus Bebo fight, and if you favored Ramirez coming in, maybe the pendulum swings a little bit the other way. I mean, Gilberto Ramirez, we talked about this on the air, sometimes he's just not as good as the sum of his parts. He has all the talent in the world. He can fight at a distance. We've seen in the past, he can land big body shots to knock opponents down and out. But he didn't go to the body in this fight. He didn't utilize all the tools in his box in this fight. And that makes me believe he's vulnerable in a b-ball fight. So here are the options in the light heavyweight division. Obviously, b 